In this section, we will look at solving equations and inequalities of all kind, like logarithmic and exponential, rational, radical, polynomial, which includes quadratic equations, and then finally systems of equations. So this chapter can be thought of as a crowning chapter for everything you've done all semester coming to closure. In the prerequisite section, we saw what it means to say you have a solving an equation or solving an inequality in one variable means. We also know what it means to solve equation inequality in two variables. So we will focus on actually solving different kinds of equations. Remember, we already also talked about what it means to solve an equation you have to undo. So if you have powers, you undo with radicals. If you have radicals, you undo with powers. If you have inequalities, we saw the test point method when it's linear or nonlinear inequality. So those are all the tools we will be using when we solve power and quadratic equations, polynomial equations of degree three or more. For these two equation solving, we will also use the zero product property we will undo radicals by taking powers. We will undo powers by taking radicals. We will undo rational equations by taking common denominator and creating equivalent equations. And we will see how to solve exponential equations using inverse functions like logarithmic functions and vice versa to solve logarithmic equations. We will make use of its inverse, which is the exponential function. And then we will finally look at solving systems of equations and inequalities. Below are some examples of equations and inequalities in one variable. You can see the first one, 2 to the x equals 4, is an exponential equation. 2 to the x less than 3.5 would be an exponential inequality. What does it mean to have a solution to an equation or inequality? So solution to an equation or inequality means when you take the real or complex number and plug it back into the original equation, it satisfies the equation or makes it a true statement when you replace the variable with that number. You can see 2 to the x equals 4. x equals 2 is a solution because 2 to the 2 power is 4 giving you a solution. If I put x equals 0 in the inequality here, 2 to the 0 is 1. 1 is smaller than 3.5. So 0 is a solution to the inequality. The question is, how do we find all solutions to an equation or inequality, and what does it mean? So solving an equation or inequality, we're using mathematical properties of equality and inequalities to isolate the variable and figure out what all the numbers are that would satisfy that equation or inequality. We will walk through different dimensions and see what solving an equation in one, one variable would mean in one-dimensional space, two-dimensional space, or three-dimensional space. We will also look at functions or equations in two variables relations in two variables, and see what the solutions to that mean in two and three dimensions. All right, let's take a look at x equals 2 and x greater than 2. In one dimensional space, x equals 2 is a point on a number line. x greater than 2, 2 is not included, and all points to the right of 2 is what you will get. What about in two dimensions? x equals 2, which means y coordinate can be anything you want. So that will be this vertical line. So all points on this line are solutions to x equals 2 in two-dimensional space. What about x greater than 2? It will be this line, but line points on this line are not part of the solution. So x coordinate has to be greater than 2, and y can be any coordinate. So that will be all of this space you see right here. What about in three dimensions? What does x equal 2 would mean in three dimensions? Let's take a look. So x equals 2, the red 
axis here is the x-axis, green is the y-axis, and the blue is the z-axis. So x equals 2 would mean this plane, all points on this plane, because x-coordinate is 2, y can be anything, and z can be anything. So y can be anything, and that means you can go front and back, and up and down, because z can be anything. So the beauty is, so it's a plane, you can see it, you can move it around and see how it is. x equals 2 represents this plane. What about x greater than 2? That means the x coordinate has to be greater than 2, so it's all the way coming towards you, away from the y-axis. So x greater than 2 would mean all of this region to the left of the plane that you see. So up and down. You can go up and down as long as you are to the left of this plane, x equals 2. And x equals 2 plane will not be part of that solution because you cannot have x equals 2. So this, all the points here are excluded in the plane, but everything to the left of it is included. So you can see how we can move around in different dimensions the solutions mean different things. What about equations in two variables and inequalities in two variables? You can have functions or relations, x plus y equals 2. So we already know that represents a straight line. And x and y intercepts are 2. And all the points on the line are going to be your solution. If you make it an inequality, say x plus y less than or equal to 2, then equal to 2 is this line, less than or equal to all the points underneath here are solutions to this inequality in two dimensions. What about in three-dimensional space? If you had x plus y equals 2, what would that mean? So we know that in two-dimensional space, it was this line going through 2, 2. So in three-dimensional space, since z coordinate can be anything, it would become this plane that is basically going up and down from that line. So you can see how x plus y equals 2 represents the plane in three dimensions. Now what about x plus y less than or equal to 2? What kind of space would that be? It would be behind the plane because you want it to be less than, so it will be on this side of it. So you can see again how we can look at functions or relations in two and three dimensions, and they mean different things. If you look at two functions, y equals f of x and y equals g of x, setting f of x equal to g of x basically generates an equation in one variable. So when you solve equations of one variable, you can also think of it as two different functions where they intersect in two-dimensional space, or what are the solutions that make the statement true on a number line. Those are different ways we can think of solving equations in one variable. An identity is an equation where it's a true statement for all values of the variable. For example, x times x is x squared is an identity because for every real number, x times x is going to give you x squared. An equation in which you end up with a false statement for all values of the variable, you will say it's no solution. Sometimes, depending on the tools we use to create equivalent equations, in isolating the variable, it can lead to extraneous solutions because it makes the original equation false. What are some of the tools that can lead to extraneous solutions, you ask? Let's take a look at that. Look what happens if we square both sides of x equals negative 3. We get x squared equals 9. So when squaring both sides, we actually can get rid of some information, in this case, that x was a negative number. So even though x squared equals 9 has two solutions, 3 and negative 3, the 3 is not going to be part of the original equation since we started out with x equals negative 3. 
So let's take a look at the equation x equals 3. If we multiply both sides by x plus 2, and bring all terms on one side and factor, you will see we get two solutions, x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. x equals negative 2 is not solution to the original equation because, why? Because we only had 3 as one solution. So you have to be careful when you multiply or divide by variable terms, or you square both sides, or you take radical on both sides. You have to keep track of even and odd root even in our powers. So this is something you have to look out for. All right, let's review. Undoing arithmetic operations is extremely important to us when we solve equations. So addition can be undone by subtraction. Subtraction can be undone by addition. Multiplication can be undone by division. Division can be undone by multiplication. We'll talk about quadratic and power functions. So if you look at two polynomial functions, f and g, we can convert all power and radical equations by manipulating the left and right hand side to look like the following. For the radical equation, we can make it look like nth root of f of x equals g of x. And then to undo the nth root, we would have to raise both sides of the equation to the nth power. And here, you have to make sure you go back and check your answers because of what we just talked about. Because if you have negatives in the function g of x and you take even power on both sides, you may lose some information. If you're looking at a power function, we can manipulate it to look like some function f of x to power n equals g of x. To undo nth power, you would have to take nth root on both sides. And again, depending on whether it's an even root or odd root, you will, it will dictate what solutions we get. When you undo even root, you get two solutions. When you undo odd roots, you only get one solution because odd root of a negative is negative, odd root of positive is positive. We're focusing our attention on specific type of radical and power equations. You've seen some, but we specifically want to talk about power equations where you have linear expressions that, that are raised to either an even or an odd whole number. So let's focus on even powers like x squared, x to the 4, x plus 1 in parentheses squared, and so on. If you encounter a linear expression raised to an even power, and you solve, and that equaling a number, and you solve, you're going to end up with two answers, a positive answer and a negative answer. For example, x squared equals 4 will give you x equals plus or minus 2, because 2 squared is 4, and negative 2 squared is also 4. So because positive and negative real numbers square to give you a positive number. When you have linear expressions raised to an even power, you're going to end up with two answers. What if you have a linear expression to an odd power, like x cubed equals 8, or x cubed equals negative 8? Cube of a number, whether it's positive or negative, retains its sign. So if you have x cubed equals 8, you're only going to end up with a positive answer. If you have x cubed equals negative 8, you will have a negative answer. So it will depend on what the starting number is. So if you had x cubed equals 8, we will have x equals 2. If you have x cubed equals negative 8, we will have x equals negative 2. OK, let's talk about radical equations. Here we're talking about linear expressions that are raised to fractional powers where the numerator is 1. So in other words, half power, 1 third power, 1 fourth power. In other words, square roots, cube roots, fourth roots, fifth roots. So you have linear expressions that are under the radical sign equaling a number. Well, how do you solve those equations? Well, if you have an even root, then for example, square root x equals 4, then you'll have to square both sides to get the answer. And when you square, 
you always want to make sure you check for extraneous solutions because when you raise both sides to an even power, you lose some information, positive or negative original start will be lost because when you square it, it will be positive. So please make sure you check your answers. If you have odd roots like cube root of x equals 2, then when you cube both sides, you'll end up with 8. So you only end up with one answer, and usually you do not end up with extraneous solutions. But it's probably a good idea to check your answers no matter what, just to make sure that you actually solve the equation and that you didn't have any issues. So we can undo powers using radicals, undo radicals using powers, and specifically, even powers can be undone by even roots, and odd powers can be undone by odd roots. You can also go in the other direction. Odd roots can be reversed by odd powers or undone by odd powers, and even roots can be undone by even powers. So let's take some concrete examples and see how to actually apply all of this in solving equations of different kinds. All right, let's take a little more in-depth look at radical and power equations. So remember what we discussed before. Squaring can be undone by doing square roots. Square roots can be undone by doing squares. In general, nth power can be unraveled by nth root, and nth root can be unraveled by nth power. Whenever you work with squaring both sides, or taking even power on both sides, or taking square roots for that matter on both sides, you must check your answer after the equation has been solved, because you could end up with extraneous solutions. All right, pause the video here. Find all solutions to the equations below. And then also talk about what are the similarities and differences between these pairs of equations. So for example, square root x equals 4 and x squared equals 4. Square root of x plus 3 equals 4 and x plus 3 bracket squared equals 4. Pause the video here, see what you can do, and then we'll discuss them together. Square root x equals 4. Remember what we said, when you look at an equation, you must know what the solutions are going to be like. Are there any restrictions? We cannot have x to be a negative number in order for us to have real solutions. So you must have x to be greater than or equal to 0. So that will give you what? When you square both sides, x equals 16. That's your solution. Check. Square root 16 is 4, so it works out. On the other side, let's say, what if you had x squared equals 4 instead of square root x equals 4? So something square is 4, which means you would have to take square root. All right, so you do undo squares, which is take square roots, but you inherit the plus or minus. Why? Because square of a positive number and square of a negative number are both positive. So we're saying that x would have to be plus or minus 2. Why? Because 2 squared is 4, and negative 2 squared is also 4. So both those work. So you can check. So solutions are x equals 2 or x equals negative 2. In order for this equation to make sense, what restriction are we going to have? x plus 3 has to be greater or equal 0, or x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3. Just remember that. All right, square both sides, solve for x, and then check your answer. Good. All right, try that one on your own. Something squared equals a number. So you're going to take square root on both sides. But remember, if you take square root, you're going to be doing plus or minus. So what does that mean? That means x plus 3 can either equal 2 or equal negative 2. And then solve for x. So two solutions will come out. x equals negative 5 or x equals negative 1. Check. Negative 5 plus 3. That will give you negative 2. Bracket squared is 4. Check negative 1 plus 3, which is 2 squared, which is also 4. So they both check out. So x equals negative 5 and negative 1 are both your solutions. So what do you notice? Similarity and differences. They have 
almost identical processes. It doesn't matter what's inside the radical. You have a square root. You square both sides between 1 and 2. Between the square root x equals 4 and x squared equals 4, they are exactly the reverse processes of each other. In the square root x equals 4, you got one answer. But x squared equals 4, you got two answers because the square of 2 and negative 2 is 4. And you can do the similarity differences between the remaining two examples also. All right, pause the video and see if you can do the next couple of examples. All right, what do you think will happen here? Look very carefully. Can, when you put real numbers in here, can square root of a real number be a negative? The answer is no. So let's just say I forgot that and I'm going to solve. So first, in order for this to make sense, we would have to have square root of this number. Square root only makes sense if you had 1 minus 2x greater or equal 0. So the restriction would have to be that 1 half is greater than or equal to x, or x is less equals 1 half. Only then this inside will be positive. All right, so let's square both sides, solve for x, and see what happens. We got x equals negative 4. Check it. So 1 minus 2 times negative 4, which is 8. 1 plus 8 is 9. Square root 9 is 3. But we want negative 3. So it does not work, so no solution. And we could have seen that right away. Square root of any real number is always a positive number, so there is no solution to this equation. So it does not work. Try that on your own. Something squared equals 3, so take square root on both sides. So 1 minus 2x is either square root 3 or negative square root 3. Subtract 1 from both sides. Divide everything by negative 2. And here's your two solutions. All right, try that on your own. Remember, when you're getting rid of 2 thirds, that means you're multiplying everything by 3 halves, right? Just remember that. So I can choose to multiply everything by 3. Remember, you can add same number on both sides, subtract same number on both sides, multiply the whole equation by the same number on both sides, or divide the whole equation by the same number on both sides. So let's choose to multiply by 3 and then unravel. So when you multiply by 3, look what happens. 3 times 2 thirds will give you a 2. 5 times 3, 15. 6 times 3, 18. And your equation looks like that. Remember, our task is to solve for x. So we need to free this x from underneath the radical sign. All right, subtract 15 from both sides. So 18 minus 15 is 3. And then divide both sides by 2. So how do we undo square roots? Square both sides. So that will give you x plus 3 equals 9 quarters. Subtract 3 on both sides. And 3 is the same as 12 fourths. 9 minus 12 fourths is negative 3 quarters. So x equals negative 3 quarters. But we don't know if it's our solution until we check. So let's check it. So negative 3 quarters plus 3, which will give you negative 3 quarters plus 12 quarters, which will give you 9 quarters. So 2 thirds times 3 halves, which will give you 1 plus 5 or 6. And that's what we wanted. So it checks out. So x equals negative 3 quarters is your solution. All right, try that one on your own. Pause the video and try. There are multiple ways to do this. You can subtract 5 from both sides and then multiply both sides by 3 halves. Or you can choose to multiply everything by 3 first, which will give you that. Then subtract 15 from both sides, then divide by 2, then square both sides. So that will give you 9 quarters. x equals 9 quarters. And again, go back and check your answer. So. 2 thirds times square root 9 quarters, which is 3 halves, which will give you 6. And the answer should be 4. So 9 quarters does not work. So this will be no solution. 9 quarters is basically an extraneous solution. All right, try that. Both sides have square roots. So square both sides, add 1 to both sides. 
and subtract x. Divide by 2 and x equals 2. Again, check your answer. Make sure it works. So x equals 2 is our solution. All right, what do you think we should do here? Pause the video and try on your own. Cube both sides. Subtract 1. Divide by negative 2. But we are not done yet. We have to check. Hey, that works out. So that's your solution.